Hello everyone, Shroom Raver here, and today, you know what it's time for. PPL, Division 1, Season 2. The final game is here. Yes indeed, today we have the final match of the PPL, and it is once again, as with last season, against Shardy. Now this game is so important for a number of reasons. Not least because last season, I faced Shardy in the final game of the season, he beat us 2-0, so this time we're out for revenge. But it's not just about beating our rival, it's not about that. This game decides whether we win the league. For those of you who don't know, as I say this was the last game of the season. And it was all rather simple really. We have to win this game. If we don't win this game, RTK wins the league on differential. We don't have a choice. We have to win this game. Now, if you want to see the full team builder, um, I uploaded a video on that, I think, on Monday. I think I uploaded that. Um, that link will be down in the description below. So if you want a full analysis, in-depth of my team, EV spreads, moves, my thought process building the team, head on down to the description check that video out, it'll tell you everything you need to know about my team. You'll also find links to the PPL Twitter and YouTube as ever to keep up to date with everything going on in the league. Follow those links for everything you need to know. And of course links will be to my opponent Shardy, his Twitter and YouTube will be there too. Make sure you head down there and check him out, you'll find links to, as I say, his, his Twitter, his YouTube, you'll find his side of this battle, all the rest of his fantastic content, make sure you check that out. But you're here for the battle. Now, to go over my team very quickly, what we've got is Specially Defensive, Calm Minding, Mega Ordino. We've got Mix Scarf, Victini. We've got Specially Defensive, Empoleon. Uh, Double Dance, Jolly Tyrantrum. We've got Physically Defensive, Umbreon as a Cleric and Wish Passer. And we have Sub Nasty Plot, Thunderous. Now, on my opponent's side, Shardy has brought Manaphy, Shaman, Salamence. Skuntank, Stunfisk, and Electabuzz. A lot of what I expected to see. In the team builder, I talked about how there was no any, there was no one more on his team at all that I could look at and say, yeah, he's not bringing that. I was pleasantly surprised not to see Aerodactyl. You know, that's the thing that I just didn't want to have to deal with. Um, it's very powerful. It's done very well this season. No Delphox, um, which meant he really only had, uh, you know, a couple of nice checks to uh, Victini. Uh, with the moveset that I'm rocking out with. The Manaphy I fully expected to see, and looking at the build-up of his team, I was expecting even more so than before, Calm Mind with Rain Support and Rest. Shaman, again, wanted to have to scout out if that was Scarfed or Ockerberry. Um, no Registeel, indeed, which was very nice to see. Uh, Ments, that's going to be an issue. I, I wasn't sure what set it was going to be running. Um, again, looking at the build-up of his team, I was thinking it's most likely physical. Um, Potentially a Dragon Dance sweeping set. Uh, the the Scun Tank, I was expecting to see Defog on that. Uh, I wasn't expecting Defensive Ments, so I was thinking that that would probably be his Defogger. Stunfisk, haha, <laughs> Stunfisk. I, I was oh, scared. I didn't want it to sweep me, I didn't even want it to get a kill. I wanted to stop it from doing what it was supposed to do against me. And Electabuzz, that looked to me to be his uh, dedicated Scarfer. That was what I expected from the team. Um, so. I felt okay about this, you know? I felt like this is a match we can win. Uh, we just have to wear down his mons as much as possible. Make sure that that mana feat isn't an issue. Don't let it set up. Get it out of there if it starts doing it. Try and get chip damage onto things like the Stunfisk, the Shaman, the uh, the Scum Tank, and, you know, deal with the Salamence on a play by play basis. Try and scout out desperately what it's going to do with Umbreon, and, you know, go from there with it. Because if it's not Scarfed, uh, and it hasn't got a Dragon Dance up, then I'm out speeding it with Victini. Uh, if it is Scarfed, or it has got a Dragon Dance up, I'm speed time with Victini. Um, Sub Nasty Plot Thunderous is looking to put in a decent shift. Tyrantrum is a backup to that if I can get a Rock Polish up. Ideally on maybe the Stunfisk, or the Scum Tank, or the Electabuzz if it's locked into an unfavourable move for the matchup. So, that's the teams. The stage is set for a showdown of epic proportions. So, without further ado, let's get into the battle and see how things played out. 
Okay, here we go. Shoddy's issuing his challenge. He's going to lead off with Insomniac. Shout out to Ellie. Um, his Electabuzz as I lead with my Mega Ordino. Now, I was calking desperately to see if I could live an Iron Tail, which I was expecting at this point. The fact that he stayed in kind of confirmed that to me. So I get my Mega off. I know I can take any hit and we can just go from there. Now, he's going to go for a Volt Switch. Now, I'm thinking he's probably a Scarfed set, but the damage he does tells me he is Timid Specs which is worrying because damage, but not so bad because I can outspeed him with Victini. In comes Zebo, that is of course his Scum Tank. I'm just going to go for the Fire Blast just to see exactly how much damage I can do to something. And the damage it does to this thing proves it's got at least some special defense investment. He shows Black Sludge so he's not AV. I want to take a Poison type attack, not at this point, so I'm going to switch right on out there, go into my Empoleon to try and sponge any one hit it can go for. He ends up going for the Taunt, so he proves that he has that fairly early on. And it just means that I can only use Scald. Now, at this point, I didn't want to make too many early predictions. I wanted to predict him to go into his Manaphy, but I couldn't really take the risk. So he does indeed go into the Manaphy. I'm just going to fire off a safe Scald, you know? It's absolutely fine. I can see exactly what we're working with here. Does absolutely nothing. He shows leftovers. I'm instantly thinking, yeah, this is, this is Calm Mind Rain support. That's exactly what I'm expecting. Now, I do switch on out here, and I probably shouldn't have done. I go into my Mega Ordino, just to try and see what he's going to do even more. He goes for the Scald once again, and you're going to see a sort of thing here with the Scald. Um, it's not going to get too many burns. There was not a lot of hot water going on in this game. Uh, there are a few, but not many at all. So he here shows Calm Mind, and this is kind of what I was scouting for. Now, I have Calm Mind of my own, and I've moved to hit him super effectively. However, the fact he's got Calm Mind as I go for a Thunderbolt means that he's definitely Rain and Hydration. Which means if we get into a Calm Mind War, I don't win. I will lose to it, and that will be bad news bears. So, at this point I realise it's red button time. Get on out of there, Ordino. Go straight into Empoleon. I'm fairly certain he can't touch me. Not even a plus one. He goes for the Scald here, and he's pretty much going to confirm that by doing very little damage to me. It, not, not, nothing at all. It barely does a, a thing. So I'm fairly comfortable realising I can take these hits, and... At this point, we're going to see Shardy just trying to get damage onto my Empoleon, fishing for the burn. So he's going to go straight for the Scald once again, as I say, looking for that burn, which is not forthcoming. Now, I could have brought him out here, but this is a nice opportunity to get up my rocks fairly early, and it will force the Defog on Scum Tank if he has it. So I get my rocks up, he gets his leftovers back, he's right on back to full, he loses nothing at this point by just going for Scalds and trying to fish for the burn. I get my leftovers back as well, I'm still going to be at a nice amount of health, after this next Scald goes off. So, in comes the Scald from the Manaphy, and I'm really happy at how well Empoleon's taking these hits, and I just go for the Raw, and get it on out of there. Not a problem, but I Raw him into Electabuzz, and this is going to be a running theme you're going to see as well. I don't get lucky with the, uh, with the Raw rolls. So I get my Leftovers back, and, you know, if he was Scarfed, I could take a hit, but he Specs, I'm not confident. However, I do have something that can at least take a hit, and that is Mega Ordino. However, the fact I'm not running a Wish set means I'm being worn down quite w quickly. So he's going to go for the Volt Switch here, and it's going to do, you know, a nice amount of damage to me. Uh, if I was Wish Protect, this would be absolutely fine, but I'm not. In comes the Salamence, and there is only one reason he would go into Salamence. He shows Intimidate, but I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it at all. If he's gone into Salamence, he has Iron Tail. So... I'm going to go into my answer to this, which is going to be Umbreon, and there it is. He shows me the Iron Tail, and it does a little bit more than I'd like, and he shows Life Orb. So I'm going to get Leftovers back. I'm like, I know I can take any one hit. He might think he can set up on me. I'm going to go for Foul Play. He shows Draco, and he misses. And I go for Foul Play, and that is going to take this thing out. So we get the first down. That was fairly crucial, it would have done a lot of damage on me, but I would have lived it, you know. This is an Umbreon, it's not dying too easily, you know. One does not simply kill an Umbreon. So he's going to go into his Scum Tank, but I have already seen the taunt on this thing, and I'm fairly certain he's going to go for it. So I'm going to scout him out by going for Protect, just to get Leftovers back and see exactly what his answer to this thing is. And there it is, he shows the taunt. Now, at this point, um, I predict him to predict me to go into Taunt Fodder, something that doesn't matter being taunted, so I'm pretty sure at this point he's actually going to switch into something to take on an offensive threat. That's exactly what he does. He switches out and goes into his, uh, his Electabuzz. But I see it coming, and I'm going to go for the Wish. 
knowing that he wasn't going to taunt again. This is actually really nice timing, because the damage he's doing to my Ordino is not enough to take it out of the range of health it's at, which means I've got a nice safe switch into Mega Ordino to get a wish off, which is fantastic. I can keep Ordino at more health than it was. So he is indeed going to go straight for that Volt Switch, uh, and as you can see, it takes me down to very, very little health, but I am able to survive, and that wish is going to come right back to me. So he's going to go into his Manaphy, Tiny Blue, take a little bit of Rocks damage, and I'm going to get my health back, which is lovely. Ordino's looking much more healthy. But Ordino still can't deal with this Manaphy. Manaphy's still a problem that I haven't found a way to deal with yet. He's going to go for Scald here, just to try and get more damage, and try and fish for the burn, which this time he is going to get... As, for some reason, I go for Calm Mind, this was not my my ideal play. I should have gone straight into Empoleon, you know. I just should have. Uh, that was a silly play by me. Um, you know, Empoleon was always my answer to this thing, but I, I play Ordino a little bit badly here, and um, as such, I get Burn, and I'm getting Residual, and Ordino's looking less and less useful. He goes for Calm Mind, and once again, I, I don't know why I stay in, because I may be at plus one, but he outspeeds. So as soon as he's going to be staying in and setting up, he's just going to set up on his own. So this Thunderbolt, we may as well be uh, both at regular no calm minds, you know? We're both at plus one each. He does get paralysed, which is kind of nice, because it does pressure him to going for the Rain Dance Rest combination, which is two turns where he can't attack or set up. But Ordino is at really, really low health to the point where it can't take a hit from Electabuzz anymore. So, a little too late, I do eventually go into my Empoleon. Uh, who, as we've seen, this thing can't touch. And there, he does reveal the Rain Dance. So that Paralysis is going to be cured, so it's not really anything of a thing that I got the Paralysis. As you can see, after this turn, I'm going to get my Leftovers back, and he's going to get his, and eventually, yeah, there's the Hydration, it does kick in. Actually, just before he gets the Leftovers back. So, Rain is up, his Scalds are going to be doing a little bit more damage to me, a little bit more than I would like. And as you can see, here it comes, there's that Rain Boosted Scald. Still not taking me below 100. And still not getting the burn. I roar him out. I'm not dealing with this thing. Not at all. And what comes in? Electabuzz. Bit of a problem because I'm running out of things to take hits from this guy. Electabuzz is proving to be a bit more of a problem than I had anticipated. So, what do I do? Well, now seems as good a time as any to sack off my Mega Ordino. And at the range that I'm at, Volt Switch actually wouldn't kill. He does end up getting a crit, and, you know, obviously that didn't matter. If he had got a low roll and hadn't killed me, Burn would have taken me down anyway, and um, I'm still going to get initiative on him, whatever happens. So in comes Evergreen, that is, of course, his Shaman, and this is where I'm going to start testing the water with Victini. Now, this could have been a bit dangerous, but I'd run the calcs, and Earth Power can't take me out if he's scarfed. So I go for U-turn, and that is going to do a lot of damage, proving that this thing is indeed an offensive set of some description. Now, at this point, I'm fairly certain that, um, that the Earth Power is coming my way, so my next best thing to take it is going to be my Umbreon. Could have gone into Thunderous, but I didn't want to take the risk with one of my win conditions. So I tank that hit with Umbreon absolutely fine. Umbreon putting in a really nice shift this game so far, and I'm hoping it can do more. He switches out, pretty much confirming to me, that he is scarfed, he's going to go into Dirt God the Stunfisk. Now, I don't pack Toxic on this thing, which would have been nice to have for the Stunfisk. I am just going to set up the Wish. Umbreon playing its game, you know, just doing its thing. The rain stops here, and what I'm doing here while this is happening is running Calcs, and if he goes for Thunderbolt or Earth Power, I know that Empoleon can take it, and can take it pretty well. So that is an option. I could be going into Empoleon here, to get a wish off and, and tank a hit. And that's exactly what I do. In comes Empoleon, he's actually going to get up his Stealth Rocks, which works even better for me, because after the wish, I am going to be at full health. It does mean that I'm pressured to go for the Defog of my own at some point. Now here, we're going to trade attacks. We both want to see how much we can do to each other. I go for the Scald, and it does a lot of damage, more than I was expecting. Um, he goes for Thunderbolt, and it does a fair amount as well. Now this shows he's got both Special Defense Investment and special attack investment. Uh, it turns out I think he was maxed out in both, and he does show leftovers, so he's not a salt vest. So this matchup's working fairly well for me, I'm quite happy. And here again I wanted to make the play. I knew the Manaphy was coming in, I wanted to go into the um into the Thunderous, but Shardy's a tricksy little bugger and I couldn't take the risk. So I just go for the safe scald. It's all I can do at this point. 
And, you know, it's causing a tiny bit of damage to the Manaphy. Not enough to threaten him, not in the slightest. He, he's not threatened by this at all. Uh, and he knows what's coming, you know. He knows that I'm going to be going for a Roar on the next turn. So he's just going to be going for damage once again. He goes for the Scald. And in it comes. Doesn't do a lot of damage to me. I'm still above 100, and he still doesn't get the burn. <laughs> so I Roar him out for the third time, and for the third time... I roar him into this Electabuzz, which is just a problem. At the very least, he's taking a lot of rocks damage, but I'm running out of things to switch into him. I don't have Mega Ordinal anymore. Now, I know my next best switch is Umbreon. He knows my next best switch is Umbreon. In the back of my mind, I was like, he could just be going for Focus Blast here. It'll hit either of them. I switch into Umbreon. I take the rocks damage, and he goes for Focus Blast. He lands the Focus Blast, fortunately for him, and it comes in. I'm Fizz Death. I'm not taking this hit. Down goes Umbreon, and now my... Big wall court is gone, which is a problem. However, I know he's locked in. Now's a chance for me to go into Thunderous and start trying to do some damage. Now, he has a pretty much go-to answer for this guy, and that is going to be Derp God, his Stunfisk, of course. So, he pulls a switch into the Stunfisk as I set up a substitute. <clears throat> now, I'm running the Calcs at max special defense. I'm not causing a lot of damage to this thing. Even with a plus two from Nasty Plot, I don't get out of this exchange behind a sub. I've sort of resigned myself to that. However, I also know that he's not going to be able to take me out before I take him out. So that in mind, I am going to go for the Nasty Plot. Because I can two hit KO him um, from this range with a plus two with him power ice. So I set up my Nasty Plot as he goes for the Thunderbolt. And as expected, that is, as you see, going to break my sub. So my sub fades and I'm going to get my leftovers back, which is grand. And he's going to get a little bit of health back for himself. Now, calcing with a modest nature and max investment, I know that a Thunderbolt isn't going to kill me. So, my main priority is just to get rid of the Stunfisk at this point. Just get rid of it. It's a problem. I don't want to deal with it. So, go for Hidden Power Ice. It does a lot of damage. But this is testament to the bulk of Stunfisk. You know, it tanks the hit. So, he goes for Thunderbolt. As I say, that's not going to be able to take me out from the range of health I'm at. I'm going to get a little bit more leftovers as he's going to get the same. Now, here, I am just going to go for the Hidden Power Ice again. He could try and switch, but I don't really see there being too much point to it. So, I go for the Hidden Power Ice, and that is going to take out the Stunfisk from that range. So, down goes Stunfisk, KO for Thunderous, we're looking good. Now, with the health I get back from leftovers, I actually can live another Rock Switch in, and I think I can get up a sub if the Rocks are not gone. He goes into Shaman, and this just confirms to me he's Scarfed, he's got Hidden Power of some description, he's going for it. So, I go into Empoleon knowing that if he predicts that and goes for Earth Power, I can still take it. So, in we come to Byro Cinder. He does, in fact, go for the Hidden Power. I believe that was Hidden Power Ice, and this damage will prove it. It does six. <laughs> six points of damage, and Empoleon is at better health than it was when it came in after taking that hit. Uh, so, Evergreen is going to switch on out. He has no business staying in an Empoleon, even if I can't hit him too hard. And he goes into... He makes the ballsy switch and goes into his Electabuzz as I just go for the Raw. Um, I figured that he would be switching in this guy, so I just go for the Raw. And I Raw him into the Manaphy. Now this provides me with a bit of an interesting opportunity to try and get some momentum here, and at the same time, get rid of a big threat to my team. So, leftovers are going to come, and I'm going to tr start trying to put a plan into motion to take care of the Electabuzz. He is going to go for the Scald here, predicting me to just be roaring him out. But that is not what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for Defog. What I'm trying to do is tempt in the Electabuzz on my predicted rock, because he's shown he's no, not averse to switching it in on me. So what I'm hoping he'll do is switch it in, predicting me to go for Stealth Rocks, and what I'm going to do is go for Scald here and try and catch it on the switch before it can do any more damage to my team. So we're going to see if that situation plays out. It does not. He's just going to be keeping going for Scald, predicting me to be roaring at some point. It's still not doing a lot of damage. He does eventually get the burn here, which is unfortunate as I go for score trying to catch Electabuzz. What this means is that the burn is there to stay and the range of health I'm at is pretty much there to stay as well. I do get a revenge burn, but it doesn't matter because he's got hydration. So my plan to try and tempt in the Electabuzz hasn't worked. I thought he would take the bait, looking to get some more initiative and take out another one of my Mons. Unfortunately for me, he did not. So... At the range of health he is at at the moment, though, I'm pretty sure he's going to be going for the Rain Dance right now, so that he can get a rest and get back to full. So knowing that, I am now going to set my rocks back up. Which is fantastic, he no longer has an opportunity to get rocks up on my side, so I can try and keep the pressure on him. 
Here we go, there are the rocks. They're up, unless you can get a defog off with Scum Tank, they're pretty much there to stay. There's the hydration, and you know, we're still looking okay. Because in my mind, he's now going to go for the rest. And in an ideal world, I can just roar him out, so the next time he comes in, the rain won't be back up. So he can't get his status back, and he can't be awake again. And he'll have to rest up for a few more turns. And this is exactly the situation that plays out. Shardy's going to go for rest on Manaphy, as I knew he would, uh, to get himself back up to the maximum amount of health he can be at, which is grand. And I do go for the roar here, which is fine, because it means he can't wake up with the hydration. And once again, I roar him into the one thing I didn't want to see, which is Insomniac. And at this point, I don't have switch-ins. I can't risk my last three mons to this Electabuzz. I just can't. Empoleon has to go down, and I just have to rely on my mons to take out the Manaphy. He goes for the Volt Switch, and down goes Empoleon, who's put in a nice shift. But unfortunately, this Manaphy has now become a major problem to me. Shardy knows this. He brings it straight back in. He gets the hydration because of the rain. He takes a little bit of rock sandwich, which do not matter. There the hydration pops, and he's going to get some leftovers back. Now, at this point, I only have one play. I don't have a choice in what I do. I have to go into Thunderous, get as much damage as possible, and after he kills me, revenge him with Victini. So I go for the Thunderbolt. This does 80% or so, but turning point, we get a crit. And this is enormous. Manaphy would have lived that, he'd been EV'd to live that hit, and now the Manaphy is gone, which is enormous. Suddenly, everything is back in my favour. Shardy is going to go into Zebo, and now we have to play the Sucker Punch game. First turn, I go for sub predicting the Sucker Punch, Shardy wins that round, he's not going to go for Sucker Punch, he's just going to go for Poison Jab, because I think, once again, he knows he can live any one hit from me, he's realised I'm not Life Orb, so he can live a timid hit at max investment. Now here, I get the prediction game right, as you're going to see. I predict him to not go for Sucker Punch, predicting me to get the wrong one and sort of think he is going to. So actually, as you see, what happens is I go for Thunderbolt, predicting him not to Sucker Punch. And that's what happens. He actually goes for Pursuit, thinking I'm going to switch out to try and save myself. Not going to happen. Down goes Thunderous, but now you know what it's time for. Skuntank at low health, me with two mons left, it's time for Tyrantrum. It's now or never, once again. Now, he has three Pokemon left. Is there a way he can do this? He switches out, and he's going to go into his Electabuzz to try and sack it and probably get a switch into his Scarf Shaman. It's not going to happen, because you know what we're doing. We're going for Rock Polish. The sweep is on. I know that we can one-shot this thing with Earthquake. That was never in doubt. We go for Earthquake, Electabuzz, you've had a good game. He's been a thorn in my side, but Tyrantrum once again comes through and takes it down. He only has one choice here, he has to go into his Shaman. At the range of health it's at, I can't take it out with Earthquake. We haven't missed a Head Smash this season, now is not the time to start. We lock in, and we hit the Head Smash. Head Smash lands, down goes Shaman, he doesn't stand a chance anymore, surely. I don't care how much investment you've got in Attack on Skun Tank, a Sucker Punch is not taking us out from this range. He brings it in, he takes the rocks damage, he's gonna go for Sucker Punch in a last gasp effort to try and do something, it does not do enough damage. We go for Earthquake, we land the Earthquake, down goes Zebo, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be a resounding 2-0 victory for Parasect Germain. So there we go. That is it, guys. The end of the season. Parasect Germain take a 2-0 victory over Shardy. And that's it. With a 9-2 differential overall through games won and lost, Parasect Germain will be crowned the PPL Division 1 Season 2 Champions. We did it. We actually did it. I can't believe we did it. Oh, what a game. Shardy, hats off. You played incredibly throughout that game. He built a fantastic team. Um, the optimum team, I think, to try and take me on. Um, and again, hats off. He's, he's played fantastically uh, in this game and in many games throughout the season. Um, we managed to get revenge for last season's game. And that win cements Paris Saint Germain as the title winners this season in the PPL. I am so so overjoyed that we managed to pull it out of the bag. Oh, there were so many factors in that game though, you know? The, the crit, the Thunderbolt crit onto Manaphy, that was fairly huge. 
I would have been able to revenge with Victini, but who knows how the game would have gone from there. Um, there was also a fairly pivotal moment um, towards the end of the game uh, where Shardy kind of choked a little bit. It turns out he was running enough speed on his scum tank to outspeed max speed Jolly Tyrantrum. And of course he was carrying the Torn. So if he'd have gone for the Torn, I wouldn't have been able to get a Rock Polish up and Tyrantrum would not have been able to sweep. Now I've been looking into calcs and what he would have had to sack off in order to, you know, revenge my Tyrantrum. And I think there's a possibility that Victini could have clutched it from there. Um, but you know, what ifs, you know, we, we, can, we can look back at those till the cows come home. The fact of the matter is, through a little bit more luck this season, once again, we managed to take the game 2-0 and take the title. I'm so happy about that. So that's it. That is the end of the season. Except it isn't quite the end of the season. Because, I don't know if you know this, there's one more game to go. Now, as you know, there is a parallel Division 2 this season. And uh, one final game to happen. There's actually two. There's the... Um, there's the playoff for the final promotion place into Division 1, that is 10th in Division 1 versus 3rd in Division 2. There is also a, a second game, aptly dubbed the Community Shield On, and that will see 1st uh, from Division 1 taking on 1st in Division 2 which is going to prove to be a very interesting game. Now at this point in the season I know who my opponent's going to be. But I'm not going to reveal it just now. Um, not going to reveal it just now. Uh, you'll have to wait and see exactly who that's going to be against. But that's going to be my final game of the season. And I'm sure there will be a team builder video to go along with that. At some point this, se uh, this season. <laughs> at some point in the next few weeks. I'll probably be releasing um, a sort of season summary video. Uh, I didn't do a very in-depth one last season. I do want to do one this season. Just go over all the team members. Um, exactly how they did. Uh, and, you know, my thoughts on the season as a whole. So you can expect that in the next couple of weeks, along hopefully with that uh, that final game. But uh, <laughs> I'm just so happy we won. It's it's an amazing feeling. I'm so glad. We cut it a bit fine. There were a few hairy moments, uh, but we managed to get there in the end. But uh, as I say, I'm going to go over that more of that in the summary video at some point in the near future. For now, however, uh, make sure to head down to the description, as I said at the beginning of the video. Uh, you'll find links to the PPL Twitter and YouTube. Uh, so you can check out everything you need to know about the PPL. Uh, and, of course, as I said, uh, make sure you check out Shardy's uh, Twitter and YouTube links. He's a very good friend of mine. He may be one of my greatest rivals, but he's one of my greatest friends as well on, on YouTube and Twitter and, and everything. So uh, please, 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 please do make sure you head there and check out his channel. He's got some wonderful content. Uh, his battles are always of the highest calibre. He may not have had the greatest of seasons this season, but you know what, he's still a fantastic battler, so do really go and check him out. You'll be doing yourself a massive favour, I, I promise you that. But yeah, that's going to be it from the in-game, in-season games this season. Paris Saint Germain have won Division 2. I'm so, so overjoyed that we've done it. Oh! And it kind of takes the pressure off us a little bit for Season 3, because we managed to do it once. So I guess next time we play a league game, we'll be defending our title. Now I don't know exactly when Season 3 is going to start, spoiler alert, there is most likely going to be a Season 3. Um, but you know, follow the uh, PPL Twitter and YouTube for updates on that score. Um, if we do, you know, it's going to be sometime next year, there's a lot of stuff to sort out. But um, for now, I just want to say thank you to everyone for joining me this season and supporting Paris at Germain through thick and thin. Thank you to you all for your fantastic support. It means the absolute world to me, and of course, it means the world to the team. Um, and I'm, I'm, I hope that we've able, we've been able to do you proud this season as supporters of Paratech Jermaine. So you know that's going to end things off. But even if we're not playing games, we've got one more to go. So keep supporting Paratech Jermaine, guys. You know, as always, we will always be going for the top. But I'm going to get out of here. So my final thank you to you all for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed. And I guess with that, I will see you next time. Laters.